Okay, so I get it. The heat map in the market is soft right now. Two big events are coming up that are going to be pivotal for price action for XRP. Long-term hodlers, maybe you got a chance to stack some more. Short-term players, maybe there's some buying opportunities coming up with a little bit of pump and dump, dip and tip. Well, let's get into the news and find out. Starting it off with your comments, you matter most. Vicky Vincenzi says, the calm before the storm or the storm before the calm? I think the latter. Well said, and we're going to show it. Yeah, we are. We're seeing some softness in the market right now, but we've got a couple interesting events coming up that could really, you know, propel the market. Seriously, there's going to be some opportunities here. And for those of you out there, we have a lot of people that play this different ways. There's honestly opportunities for everyone coming up. John Slack says, boo, go, I almost said go Sox. Boo, Sox, go Braves. Now, I know the Sox are playing the Braves. The Sox are probably going to get crushed today. They're 0-3. Frankie Ortiz says, oh, yeah, it's back. Yeah, the Big Dates video, I will have it linked at the end. All right, all right, look, we're seeing some red, and I get it. There were stories floating around with April Fools. Oh, the SEC settled, and I was like, that's in poor taste because there's some people that are probably going to be reading into it. But you got the heat map down. Pretty much across the board, a few of those out there bucking trends like Bitcoin Cash, a little OG action right there. You got Meme down pretty deep in the red, Maddox down a bit, uh, HBAR down as well. Look at that, down 7.6% last 24 hours. So yeah, there's some there's some redness showing up, but we've got the halving around the bend, okay? 18 days, 5 hours away from now. So you got the halving around the bend. You got Bitcoin miners out there going, look, things are going to be very different for us after the halving. A lot of the miners, too, are going to be considering, hey, do we sell our Bitcoin that we've mined here as of late? Like, are they thinking a price correction is going to come? Because remember, the market right now is still being tugged very heavily by Bitcoin. So if the miners are like, you know what? We think the halving is just going to suck. Prices are going to go down. They'll start selling their Bitcoin now. So you do. You have people on both sides of the equation here looking to play this differently. Well, if the Bitcoin miners decide to start selling and it pushes prices even lower before the halving, wouldn't it be a buy opportunity on a short-term rebound? Well, you also got to tie this into how does this directly apply to XRP? Well, we know XRP will move generally, not, not lockstep, let's be real here, generally with BTC tugging along. Now, what about the court case? Well, the SEC said, hey, look, we want $2 billion. Well, guess what? Ripple's going to actually have a chance to say, well, we want you to shut the hell up. I almost said a really, really naughty word, but I was like, look, April Fool's, Klaus is going to be PG-13 today. Or at least on camera, I'm going to be PG-13. Off camera, it is going to go down. No, I'm just kidding. Recovery day today. But April 22nd, got it up here on the screen. As always, any article you see in this video, along with all my other ones, will be linked in the description below. April 22nd, you've got Ripple's deadline to file its opposition brief, and that is to the SEC's $2 billion asking. Remember, they're going to do redactions a few days later. So you've got on the 19th having, and three days later, you got Ripple saying, hey, look, this is what we want to pay. So you've got a couple big pivotal events. You also got CPI data coming up, of which the market is now pricing in another pause on the May 1st contract when it comes to raising rates. I read an article before I went on, you know, on the camera here, I almost said live, I'm not live, I'm recording this, it's live for me because it's happening right now, but I read an article before uh, I came on here and it had to do with, you know, UK and Eurozone recession, and we're looking at this going, well, some economies are healthier than the others, some economies are still dealing with hardcore inflation, some are actually getting a handle on inflation, in the United States we're seeing inflation is pretty much going sideways here, so we're having some problems squashing it. So at the having event here, and with all the penalty talks between Ripple and the SEC coming up, there's quite a few opportunities. Now, we've seen some nasty candlesticks. I get it, okay? April is first has not been good for XRP as of yet. But think, up until this point, we were rocking it pretty solid at 63. Now, you guys know what I'm watching for. And gals know what I'm watching for. I'm watching to make sure that we hold above the 60 cent line. Check this out. Look at the volume here. Look at the volume right around that 60, per, 60 cent protection. That, that, that's very significant, right? You can kind of see people are like, okay, F this. And then when it got to the 60 cent, they're like, yo, we'll buy. We will buy sub 60 and bring this back on up. You know, when we zoom out, we've seen that XRP has actually been able 
to make some juicy action. All right. I mean, you can play the swings. Are the swings as often? Uh, no. Are they as big as other players in the market? No. I mean, obviously, look, sold down 3.5% now at $189. It's a massive move on soul overall. So, like, I get it. XRP has not moved as much. But we have some big events here. And with XRP being a laggard, and with us actually getting to see, you know, what Ripple's expectations are regarding penalties, this could set us up for some opportunities for people, yes, to be able to buy the play the short term action, for a market correction where people can get in and be like, look, I want to add to my stacking bags. I also want to buy it thinking, hey, if we get a market pump around the halving, I could dump it again and make some profit. The market is more alive. And one of the things I wanted to share with you is look at this. The more I've zoomed out here, the more you can see that, yes, I get it, okay? From the from the April 2022 time, right? I get it. It's We're in different economic conditions. But we've been building a stronger floor. 30 cent floor, 40, hung around 50, mid 50s, mid 50s. And again, we're fighting very heavily around 60 cents. 60 cents wasn't something we were talking about here in the end, middle of 2023, right? We weren't. We were talking about, oh crap, we're in the 30 cent range. Oh, yeah, we pumped up to 50. Oh, crap, we're back in the 30 range. That was the talk. Now we're getting more used to this idea of XRP being north of the 50 cent mark. Because think about this. When we look back here, we're looking. We've essentially been north of that 50 cent mark where we've held it since the Torres pump. Now, yeah, did we have some times where we went below and we touched it? Yeah, speaking of touching it, touch the subscribe button. I like it. And touch the like button. Touch whatever the hell you want. It's cool. But the narrative in the story is very different than it was last year, much more positive than it was last year. And with events happening like the BTC having and us getting, yes, closer to the finish line with the court case, that's going to present a lot of opportunities to buy, sell, and hodl for XRP holders and fans alike. You know, you're always going to have blips on the radar where you're going to have days like today where the candlesticks just aren't green. And it's not healthy to have green candlesticks every day. But I wanted to share with you an observation. And let me know if you've been seeing this as well. Because part of this has to do with the weekends. Have you noticed since the BTC ETFs, the weekends for crypto have been fairly boring? Don't you remember just even like a year ago weekends, man, we would have to watch those charts left and right because anything could happen on the weekend. But since that ETF action went live, the market's been a lot more calm and muted over the weekends, which has saved the volatility for the five-day business week, which is really weird because crypto trades 24-7. But you know what that tells me? That maybe more traditional finance players are getting into the crypto market. Which is good news because that's where a whole bunch of money is right now. And a whole bunch of money that's looking at it going, hey, there are other opportunities out there. That ETF did some amazing things for crypto. Now, am I saying XRP is going to move? No. Am I saying XRP is going to go to zero? No. What I'm saying is there's opportunities out there for pretty much everyone who watches this channel. And you're going to see these opportunities play out leading into the having shortly after the having and going into the ripple part of the case saying, hey, look, this is what we expect for penalties versus what you said. So there's some opportunities out there. Now, if you want to know about specific dates regarding when the big impactful events are, and I'm just talking about in the United States, I'm talking about all across the globe, I got you covered. That's this video right here. Check it out. You've got resources in there. So no matter what country you live in, you can filter the big dates that apply to you. How cool is that? Now, what am I doing today? Well, it's a recovery day and I'm watching the White Sox. Probably going to lose. Oh, I hope not. Come on, Eloy Jimenez. Do something.